started thinking we needed to remove the rudder when I saw some water dripping from the bottom of it. Fast forward about a week later and we're actually working on getting it taken apart. I look down and sure enough it's moving. So she's here, she's safe, everything's all right. We just got really, really scared there for a minute. section of the keel is made of plywood and was added to the lead section of the keel to add lateral resistance while sailing. We added an extra layer of fiberglass to strengthen it after it was cracked while being hauled out of the water. We had quite an eventful morning. It did not go according to plan. Michael and I went into town to get internet for the phone and Lola, we had her stay behind. She tries to follow us. She's tried once or twice on the bike. We told her to sit, she sat, and we left. We saw her, she never followed us. And two weird things happen. When we get back, first of all, Lola's gone. Um, but another weird thing was this, this rope here. I looked down and our lines, our anchor line was moving. And so I follow the line and I look out and there's somebody on the, on the other side of that fence over there feeding it through, pulling it through. It's already all the way across and through the fence and he's pulling it through. So I look over at him and then he immediately starts to look like he's taking a peek. And I'm just sitting here like... I stared at him for a while awkwardly. He yelled up the hill and then he slowly kind of awkwardly wandered off. I went and told Michael what, what had happened is, is we're looking for Lola at the same time. We can't find Lola. And I point him out and Michael sees him. He wanders over and gets on a motorcycle. Then it went in this huge search operation for Lola. We could not find Lola. Our neighbors said that Lola who came running after us. In hindsight, we think that he mistook Baby, the boatyard dog, for Lola because she did follow us and she always does. But we were kind of, we had the whole town aroused. We were showing pictures. We were scouring the town looking for Lola. We came back to the boatyard twice and yelled Lola and ran all around. She, she wasn't coming to us. She, she wasn't here. She wasn't in town. We were starting to wonder what in the world is going on here. And then we come back for the third time and I go and look and I'm starting to think the worst of things. I'm, I'm not even, I'm looking in corners. I'm looking in dirt. Maybe someone like, took her out. We overreacted. My mind went all over the place, but then, then uh, we found. And then she just came walking out from under the shade. Michael was walking, and she walked right out. And there she was. She was at the boatyard. So she's here. She's safe. Everything's all right. We just got really, really scared there for a minute. Lola always comes when we call her. Um, she's out there playing in the boatyard. We give her quite a bit of freedom, but she always, always comes. She didn't come. Some, I, we went into town because we heard, you know, someone saw her running into town. Pretty sure they saw a different dog. Um, it's still really weird that if she was here the whole time, she didn't come when we were calling her name, but she eventually did. Um, and we could stop panicking because obviously she's She's all right. She's just taking a little nap, which is usual for her around this time of day. But I can say she won't be getting nearly as much freedom in the boatyard after this. Um, yeah, we're not gonna let her run around unless we're there to keep an eye on her because that was just too scary. And we would have had no one to blame but ourselves.
started thinking we needed to remove the rudder when I saw some water dripping from the bottom of it. This grimy brass plate just came off. It's held on by like seven different screws. You can see in here a couple barnacles hanging out in there as well. Let's get those out of here. And this is all just really crusty looking. So as it was dripping out of the keel, we saw water dripping and you, I mean, you can even look at the puddle of rust that it created on the ground. So all in all, that just didn't look good. Plus when we do our barrier coat, we want to do a barrier coat over the whole boat, which involves doing back behind the rudder here, getting into the skeg and I don't know that this has been painted even the last time the boat was painted, so we want to do a good job with that. Oh my god, there it goes! The last little bugger. Hey, come on, little guy. And there we go. Plate number two. We learned from the Carter Owners Group, Shock Mate is a Carter 33. This owners group has been an amazing source of information for us. What we learned is that the rudder shaft comes up through the cockpit floor. Now, I think this is probably a little different from most skeg hung or fin rudders where the shaft is molded into the fin itself. Ours fits into a socket that goes down into the rudder fin and the shaft, which I'm going to show you here in a moment, is a square and that comes out before the rudder can then be removed from the bottom of the skeg where it sits. So, we took out a few screws here, opened up this plate. I think these plates actually open where this twists out, but we don't have the little tools. So we just took the whole thing out. And what you can see there is some crusties and the top of our rudder shaft. Now, some friends of ours left about a month ago. They were headed to Haiti when their steering failed and they had to implement their emergency tiller. And that got us thinking how important it would be for us to have an emergency tiller, especially with the cruising that we plan to do in the future. Little did we know, we already had one. This crazy bar was stuck in the locker down here and as we were going through things a couple months ago, I, I pulled it out and I turned to Joel and I said, what's this? And he said, I don't know, but don't throw it away. Kind of got into a mood where I wanted to throw anything that wasn't being used or considered useful off the boat. And good thing I didn't because look, look at that. Is that cool or what? <laughs> When I heard that it just pulled right out, my first instinct was to grab some big pliers and try to heave on it, you know? Ugh. But clearly that doesn't do anything. So we did a little bit more digging, crawling into the locker, looking at where the radial drive that connects to our steering wheel connects into the prop shaft, or I'm sorry, the rudder shaft and what we learned is that probably the entire steering, radial drive steering, needs to come apart in order to remove the rudder shaft. So let's go jump down into the locker and take a look down there. My favorite place on the whole boat. Cozy little locker. This hose clamp and shaft key is the bane of our existence at the moment. At least I think it is. We haven't even got to that yet. What we're looking at is the radial drive steering system that comes down here from our Edson steering pedestal by way of these wires, connects to the drums which connect to the rudder shaft which steers the boat. Now, as far as I can tell, just from looking at it, these top wires and the top drum is how you steer the boat with the wheel, and the bottom drum with these wires connect to the autopilot in the back, and that's how our autopilot steers the boat. So that shaft key and hose clamp that I was showing you is how the top drum connects to the rudder shaft and steers. The drum itself is clamped onto the outside 
of the shaft, that socket that the square shaft fits into, you can see that this is a round shaft in here. So the drum isn't clamped onto the rudder shaft itself. I believe that it is this shaft key which goes into the housing of the rudder shaft, into the rudder shaft, and steers the boat. The bottom drum was secured by two set screws, which came out pretty easily, but the rudder shaft still doesn't move. So I'm thinking our next move is to attack that shaft key and we'll be in business. However, that does involve removing this entire top drum, taking the wires out of the pedestal, dismantling the entire pedestal probably, and the steering system. So, wish us luck. These are the tales of Boab. All right, Bob's on a boat. We're off on our, on our adventure. Last day in the books. Yeah, last night got a little dicey. We'll uh, fill you in when we get the video uploaded. There's Joel on the helm. We're gonna get in though. We made it though. You wanna see our sail? 